everyone and welcome to another speed build. Today I'm sharing an off the grid house and I've been really wanting to make another off the grid house since Eco Lifestyle came out because now we can do so much more with off the grid homes. I made one other off the grid build and that was a year ago. I think I called it off the grid shack, not exactly the most creative name, but it, it works. It's exactly what it is. And when I was doing that build, I remember getting so frustrated with the off the grid law trade because it felt so limited and it was kind of wonky. It was stuff like your Sims couldn't properly do laundry. Like they could do their laundry once and then they couldn't refill the, wa the wash bucket because they don't have water. So they can't refill the bucket and you're only able to use the cheap appliances, cheap plumbing, I guess. I guess the reasoning was that, you know, like off the grid, you know, it's was, it was just supposed to be like a cheap, um, you know, it wasn't really meant to be an eco type thing. It was more so you're living on this island that literally is not on the grid. So you cannot get plumbing, you cannot get electricity, but it just, it was just so frustrating to work with. And I guess they figured only being able to use the cheap appliances and plumbing was kind of the best approximation with that, but it definitely just kind of missed the mark and was not easy to use. So I am just glad that with all the things that came with Eco Lifestyle, you're able to get power, you're able to get water. So I stuck a whole bunch of solar panels on this lot. We've got some windmills, we've got a dew collector, we've got that one environmental water generator, I think is what it's called. It's basically that machine that just pulls water out of the atmosphere. And on the inside of this house, I didn't worry so much about using off the grid plumbing and appliances. I also didn't use just candles. I use a lot of regular light fixtures because I figured with all of the things that I added to generate power and water, it should be fine. And I did do some play testing with this lot and it actually worked pretty well. Like I played for a whole sim day and you know, right off the bat, I wasn't really able to use much, but it didn't take long for the lot to start generating a surplus of electricity and water. So I didn't really run into any issues while I was playing where all of a sudden my Sim lost the ability to use things. So I think it should work pretty well. So here I go, just adding in a bunch of solar panels and we've got the green roofs to give this lot eco-friendly feel. There's also that living roof on the flat area. And I was trying to give this lot a feel that was rustic while at the same time being very modern. So this is of course a lot different than the other off the grid build I did because that one, as I said, was called off the grid shack. It was very, very rough, very mismatched. This house definitely has more of an, a high end eco-friendly feel to it. You know, like there's a family living here who wanted to live off the grid and be more environmentally friendly, but at the same time, they wanted their creature comforts. They wanted to kind of live a life that they were accustomed to living. So this house does have two bedrooms. I wanted to make it a bit bigger. Like I wanted to be able to put three bedrooms in, but it didn't quite work out. So there is of course a bedroom for parents or a single parent, whatever you want to do with it. And then there's another bedroom that I imagine to be for a kid. It could also be for a teen. There's not really a lot of toys or kids activities. So it's kind of between the two. I think you could go either way with it. You could probably swap out some things or like figure out some space to add more toys in. But here I am just adding this fence across, you know, around the whole perimeter of the property just to mark things off a bit. I really like the rustic look that these fences have. Like there's just a bunch of really nice fences in the debug catalog. And the nice thing about these fences is that they're not limited to the grid. So I always just find it so much easier to work with these fences. The only problem is that Sims can walk through it, but with these hedges, I don't think that's gonna be a problem because these hedges, like a lot of the debug plants don't have um, routing on them. Like your Sims can just walk through them, but these ones actually caused an issue in the kitchen, like where my Sims weren't able to use a stove. And I was sitting there trying to figure out why they couldn't use it. And then I finally realized, oh, this bush is too close. So I think those might have some routing on them that prevents your sims from walking through them. Hopefully that's the case, but I don't think it's that huge of an issue. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make this greenhouse with cobbled together windows because I've seen tiny homes like this where one side of the tiny house is just a bunch of secondhand windows put together. like. 
they go to, I guess, a secondhand store or maybe not a dump, you know, there's, there's probably places where you can go and just buy old secondhand windows. So I really like this idea to make an eco, like a more eco-friendly greenhouse where rather than using old new materials, they just went and found a whole bunch of windows, pieced them together. You do have that one side, which has a wall and a proper door on it. Just because I wanted to make sure Sims could actually get in there. Um, I forgot to play test that, but I, I can't imagine why that'd be a problem. But I just thought this was a really neat thing that added a unique feature to this build. And I've also just been wanting to try making a tiny house like that. The only thing is I feel like the lighting would get on my nerves because you can't put any walls where those windows are. Otherwise, some of them would be, wouldn't be see-through. So you would get that outdoor lighting inside, but that might be something to try. Yeah, maybe I will do that eventually because it's been a little bit since I built a tiny home. So this other structure that I'm creating here is supposed to be sort of a, it's like a shed and this is what houses the generators because in addition to the solar panels, we also have generators just in case you have a bunch of cloudy days, you need to get a little bit of backup energy. But the idea is that mainly the solar panels and the windmills can power this house and the generators are just used if those aren't able to cut it. Um, so yeah, that's where those are. There's also a candle making station in there because you'll see that there's a lot of candles on the inside of this house. Uh, there's not really much other than that. There's that water generator in there. That's that's kind of it. I put some decorations in there. You'll see that once we get to it. But here I'm just starting off figuring out the landscaping and adding things in such as the mailbox. And oh yeah, there's also a garden. So in, in addition to the greenhouse, we have this. Something I did need to figure out was whether that greenhouse that I made actually functions the way greenhouses are supposed to in this game, where you can grow plants around the around the year. Because I'm not sure if it's the walls, like it being enclosed in a room that dictates whether it works like that or if it's just there simply being a cover. It's it's probably the walls, so that probably doesn't work that way. But again, it, it just was a really cool looking thing I had to do. We have even more solar panels over here. So there is just a crap ton of, of solar panels all over this house. In addition to these windmills, I actually got rid of these and moved them onto the roof because I wanted to have some plants there. But still, plenty of power generation on this house. There's also a patio area out back there that has a table and a grill, which is something that does work off the grid. So there's just a lot in this yard here. I wanted this to have this yard to have a very packed feel. And also with that second building where the generators and all that are stored, I wanted that to have a look like the greenhouse where it's made with secondhand material. Like they found that corrugated metal secondhand and then used that. There's also a trailer door there. Like they just kind of found that somewhere and used it. Um, I was also trying to Keep in mind the eco-friendliness of the items that I used. I wasn't perfect with it, but I was trying to pay attention to those ratings somewhat. I think that metal wall might have an industrial rating on it. I'm not sure, but when I do get to furnish in the interior of that, I did actually check the flooring that I was using. And I tried to use a concrete or gravel type flooring that was neutral or had a lesser environmental gain. And I do like that system um, and also the fire system as well, like how wood, you know, wood flooring is will more easily catch on fire. Um, I talked about this before, but I do like that the items that your Sims use now have a bit more impact, like the materials that they're made of are actually taken into account. But there's something I found kind of interesting about that. And even though Ego Lifestyle came out two months ago, getting close to three months ago now, I still have not done any gameplay with it. Like I just, things have just like this whole summer, I know I keep talking about this, um, this whole summer things have just been so crazy. Like I really want to try to try out the gameplay with that pack, but I just have not had the time to just sit down and play The Sims when I'm not either recording a you know, part for my Sims 2 Let's Play or a build or something like that. I'm hoping eventually I get time for that again. Um, and speaking of the Sims 2 Let's Play, I did want to say that I have started working on the new house for Mary Sue and Makoto, her new husband. Um, in case anybody was wondering what I was doing with that, I am still going to be building that. So hopefully sometime over the next couple of weeks, you all would see, we'll see a little Sims 2 speed build where I'm making a house for them. Really excited for that because it has been so long since I built in The Sims 2. 
Um, I've done some furnishing, but I've never like done a full build. So there is a bit of a learning curve there, but it is kind of neat to get into, even though it's a bit frustrating. Like I, I just, like the thing with building in The Sims 2 and The Sims 3 is that you always have to be careful where you start building. Cause I'm so used to The Sims 4 where you can just be like, oh, I don't like where I started building. I'm just gonna go ahead and move the whole thing. Like I just, I remember back in the day getting so frustrated when I would, like there were times when I actually demolished a build because I was like, this is not working where it is. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the build, I am furnishing the patio area here. So we've just got this really cute picnic table. I liked the kind of creative boho feel that it has. Boho definitely wasn't the styles going with for this house, but I just felt like it tied in with the feel that this house has. Here I'm furnishing the greenhouse. There's not really a lot, or I'm just going back and fixing some things. Yeah, there's not a lot to it. We just got some planter boxes that shove with a bunch of flowers on it. Couldn't really fit a ton in there. Here I'm getting some lighting. So these lights, of course, work off the grid just to keep everything well lit in the backyard there. Um, yeah, I was trying to fit in. Like I, I, So what I did with the inside is I try to have some form of off the grid lighting in every room, just so in the event that the power does run out, you at least have something. Um, the only problem is I don't think there's really any plumbing that works off the grid. Um, but if you run into an issue with that, you could probably swap out one of the sinks that I used with one of the off the grid ones. Um, and I, I think also like in the bathroom upstairs, there's a shower. So you could probably swap that out with a cheap one that works off the grid. So there's, there's easy things you can go that will, if you run into that issue. But, um, as I said, I didn't really notice too many problems with that. Here I'm working on furnishing this shed area. So we just got some bags of fertilizer. I thought that was a neat decoration. I also found some biofuel in the debug catalog. So I stuck that out. So that should be there or it might, it, sh it should be there when you download the build. I can't remember if I took it out for the downloadable version or not because I did run into some issues with where the generators were positioned when I was play testing. So it, it might be there, it might not, but the generator should work because I did move them around to where they worked. I also liked using that light that came with Strangerville. I thought that kind of added to that homemade feel that this build has. Or it is more so that feeling of creatively reusing old stuff. And also this is built on, as you can see in the top left corner, this is built on Hindcourt or Hideaway, which is one of those lots that are off to the side in Brindleton Bay that don't really have a road going up to them. I've never built on this lot before. So I thought this was just a perfect build to do because one of the reasons why I never really use this lot is that it doesn't have a connection to a road, so you can't really do, you know, you can't really build a regular suburban house up here because it doesn't quite, like, it, it just doesn't feel like something that would be up here. Um, Cause as I said, you don't really have a road, you connect a driveway or a path to. So this is just the type of build that works so well on this lot. So moving on to the interior now, and I really like the layout of this build. So we've got that, bit of wall there that a fireplace goes up against and then the staircase kind of wraps up again, wraps around it. And then when you go upstairs, I continue that wall to the upper floor. So it just looks like a chimney going all the way up to the roof. So it's, it's just kind of neat how the staircase wraps around it. And I think it makes for a very interesting landing upstairs. And the kitchen is in kind of an odd spot right here next to the door, but this is just what I thought worked the best. And then the dining room is in that area with all the windows that is sort of an extension. And I chose that flooring there because I was trying to find some kind of hard flooring that was maybe eco-friendly or at least didn't have an industrial um, eco footprint to it. And this one, it said it had a minor eco improvement, which I found interesting. I think it was like two or something like that. I thought there was just like, eco footprint or industrial footprint, but there's, it's, it's interesting. There's kind of like these minor footprints. So I figured that was a good one to use because it was at least slightly, you know, slightly more eco-friendly. Although in hindsight, maybe I put a, put, should have put some tile right in front of the fireplace because that wood floor there will now catch on fire quicker. So hopefully there aren't any issues with that causing any fires. Um, I tried, although I did put some candles above it. Uh, hopefully that's not too much of an issue. Um, I also stuck that wall decoration, like that slatted wall decoration. 
behind like next to the counter just to kind of separate the entryway from the kitchen. I just had to delete some walls to get to fit in there quite, you know, like it does, but that definitely helped a lot with just giving that separation between the entryway and the kitchen. And I think that whole area just looks really nice. So I did have a little bit of trouble with furnishing the kitchen. This was probably the part of the house that took me the longest to figure out. I spent 30 or 40 minutes on just the kitchen. Whereas like once I got past this, I furnished the rest of the house really quickly. I think it was because I was trying to find the right balance between the modern feel that this house has and some of the more rustic elements that it has. I also wanted something that felt kind of lived in and didn't feel like this perfect show kitchen. And when I do more modern kitchens like this, like where I use these, um, I actually do change these counters um, because I think this is part of the reason why I got stuck so stuck on the kitchen at first. But like, yeah, I always have trouble, like, like whenever I do more modern kitchens, I always want to make them more minimal and less clutter. So it was just kind of trying to get that look of being cluttered and lived in with the more modern appliances and all of that that I used in here. But in the end, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. And as you can see, we've also got some candles in the window still there. I really do like doing that. I just think it looks so cute to put candles and other decorations in those windows. It's just so perfect for that. Like we have that really cute llama that came with Nifty Knitting stuff. And I did actually use some stuff with Nifty Knitting, some stuff from Nifty Knitting in this house. Cause what I was thinking was that the kid is into knitting, you know, like it's just kind of a hobby they picked up to pass time. Like, you know, maybe they're very creative and crafty kids. So they like to make toys for themselves or just little decorations that can go around the house. And their parents are of course happy to display them. So, you know, they made that llama and then you'll see some other decorations in the living room. As far as the parents, I don't really have too much of a personality thought out for them. I was thinking that, like I was sort of imagining them to be both in some sort of technology sector, like maybe one of them works as a programmer, like some kind of field where they're easily able to work remotely cause I just, I imagine that this, that this house is very far away from towns. So, and, and there's not a car here, so they're not really gonna be able to commute easily. I just realized I forgot to put a bike. That would have been perfect to have for this house, like just for them to kind of get into town or whatever. You know, like maybe they live near a small town or something like that, but they're not in an area that has a lot of technology jobs. So they are able to work remotely. And, you know, since they're off the grid, they just get internet through the satellite or a cell tower or something along those lines, because you can't do that. But um, I think that kind of suits someone living in this type of house. And we just got a laptop sitting there because since this house is off the grid, I didn't see them wanting to have this power hungry desktop. And that way I just kind of see them, you know, like when the weather's nice, they could take their laptop and bring it outside to the picnic table and just work while taking in the beauty of their surroundings. That would be, that'd be wonderful to do. Yeah. Here's where I'm swapping out the counters because I just was not feeling those jungle adventure counters. And I think these look so much better. I didn't use the matching cabinets just because I I thought it was a bit much having the openness of them. I don't particularly like those upper cabinets. So I just used those base game all black ones and they worked pretty well. But that is it for that room. Now we're on to the living room and here I am just sticking a bunch of candles on top of the fireplace. So that's the thing that I kind of worry about causing fires. I did snap a few of them onto the fireplace. So I'm thinking if they snap up there, that should be fine. But here we're just getting the furniture in and I forgot that these came with this pack. Like I, I didn't I didn't notice these coming with Eco Lifestyle, but these couches are really nice and I hadn't gotten a chance to use them yet. It did take me a little bit to figure out the end table because I didn't want to make everything feel like a perfectly matching set in here. But I found that this poof worked really well. Um, I do really like that end table. Then we got that candle there, you know, as backup off the grid lighting. I tried out using these candles on that end table, but it didn't really fit right. And the thing with candles is you can't downsize them. Otherwise you have an abnormally large floating flame, which doesn't really look the best, but here we're just adding some stuff on top of that still there. So I got some plants, 
more candles. We've got that magazine rack there with that cute flower print. I think looks really that I think looks really nice. And then we got some overhead, just regular old lighting. Um, other than that, I did add some. Oh yeah, I was trying to find various knickknacks that came with nifty knitting stuff to put on top of the on top of the coffee table. So as I said, those are things that I imagine the kid making just to put around the house. That definitely feels like more of a decoration than a toy. I've also added some, adding some pet stuff in. I kind of saw them having a little dog. So we've got the bed there against the coffee table and then just some toys scattered around. Uh, Cause now having a dog, I just realized how much stuff ends up all over the place. Like in the past, when I made builds, I would always have like with pets, I would always have the dog stuff just off to the side and the bed would be in a corner. But yeah, actually having a dog now, I'm like, no, that doesn't happen because he moves his bed around, he throws his toys all over the place. So just, just dog toys everywhere. Cause he has, he has so many toys. So I just want to show that a bit here. And on the off chance anyone is wondering, Scott is doing well, he's settling in. Uh, we also started taking him to dog daycare a couple times a week. Cause I found out there was one near my work, like a mile away. Um, cause I did have to, my work did have everyone come back to the office a couple months ago, which not exactly thrilled about because we all could continue easily continue doing our work from home but let, let's not get into that right now um so yeah i found that so we've just been doing that a couple times a week which has just helped a lot with his energy level and he gets to play with dogs which he really loves so yeah that that was just a wonderful thing to be able to do but getting back to the build we are currently on the sunroom which i really like we just got a bunch of plants in here i wanted to just be this really cozy reading spot and I like how that rug looks in here, like just that more worn secondhand look that it has. I also use that coffee table that came with backyard stuff, which isn't one I normally use. Like normally I don't use, cause there's that coffee table and there's another one that has kind of a tap, tapestry? That's not the word, runner. I think that's the word for that rug, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I don't usually use those just because that fabric tends to kind of conflict with what else I'm doing in the room. but. For this one, I thought it worked really well in here. And they've got a ceiling fan. I thought that was a nice little addition to have in there for some more low energy cooling. I didn't add a thermostat to this house uh, that might be needed because of seasons. Um, hopefully that's not too much of a problem. Cause I, I didn't put that in because you know, that uses energy. So I thought that wouldn't really be that good with the off the grid thing. And I think the fans are cooling and then the fireplace heats, but I, I couldn't stick a fireplace in every room. So that wouldn't really have worked out as a way to heat the house. I don't know if just that one fireplace heats the whole house. That'd be great. Um, and it might've been a good idea to put more pants, more fans throughout the house as passive cooling. But uh, yeah, those are ways to get heating and cooling, I suppose, without putting a thermostat in eco or in um, off the grid homes. But that is it for the lower level. Now we're on to the upper level. So we've just got the table there where I stuck that penguin decoration from Nifty Knitting. So yet another thing that the child has crafted for this house. I just grabbed a whole bunch of stuff into this little landing area here. I did have, yeah, here's where I swapped that out because I realized that one worked a little bit better outside the bathroom. So it's just kind of like this shelf that has towels and other things that they may need for the bathroom that didn't fit in there. We just got some picture frames so that you can add family photos there if you want. So this is the, or we're not doing that. Yeah, we're not doing that one yet. Or actually, no, we're onto this room now, yeah. So this is the kids slash teen room, whatever you want it to be. There wasn't, there just wasn't a lot of space within this room to personalize it, but I mean, the nice thing about the is that it's pretty easy. Like, I think this is a room that will work for a wide range of Sims. So it's not like it's so heavily themed that it's it's hard, like you have to have a very specific Sim to fit it in. So yeah, there are benefits to doing rooms like this. Um, it's just very orange, blue, and yellow. That's kind of it, lots of knitted stuff. So I just try to add these toys here. Yeah, I do kind of see this as being more of a, like a preteen room, you know, like maybe a 12 or 13 year old's room where they're kind of getting past toys, but they still are into crafts. Cause I remember, I think when I was about that age, I, I was into stuff like this. Like I actually used to crochet. I, I just found it soothing in some way. Like when I was in high school, I also, they had this project lines thing in my school where you could make blankets and then they would be taken to hospitals, I guess, to comfort, um, 
I think they used it to cover people getting chemotherapy and other stuff like that. So I crocheted a lot of blankets for that. Uh, and that was also a super easy way to get service hours because I remember I had triple the required service hours just because I would crochet a bunch of blankets and then log all those as service hours. So that was the great thing about that as well. Um, I haven't done that as years though, in years though, but yeah, it was something that I found very soothing. So I just, I just kind of see this kid as kind of being into the same thing, just crafty in general. I also stuck a bunch of these projects on top of the dresser because this room is small. So I figure that's probably the only space they could figure out to put stuff. And maybe this is also a kid that's homeschooled. I know that's not a thing that you can actually do in the game, but I could see that being the case. Like maybe, maybe one parent programs or does some other technology sector related job. And then the other one, maybe before they bought this house, they used to be a teacher, so they now homeschool their kid, and that's that's what they do. I think I think that works out pretty well for this house, but that isn't for that room. So now we're onto the bathroom, which is very white. I also used the toilet and sink that came with Eco Lifestyle, which I have not used yet. They're kind of awkward looking, not my favorite, but for this house, I think they worked. I didn't use the bathtub because I wanted a bathtub that fully filled out that two by one tile space just so it looked like it was nestled in the wall there. But that is it. So now we're onto the parents' bedroom, which is the last room of this house. And I really like this room because it does have a skylight above it. So that just gives you that really beautiful lighting. I've said this many times before, but I really enjoy seeing the lighting that comes in through the skylight. I just think it looks absolutely beautiful to see the pattern on the furniture. So rather than using the beds that came with Eco Lifestyle, I used this one. Just want to try something a little different, but I like how it looks in here. This room does have a very neutral color scheme, but I think it looks nice. That rug there also fits in very well. I don't think I've used in that pattern yet. And then we just got the ottoman there at the foot of the bed, which goes with everything else that we use in this room. We've got more plants, of course. This is, you know, I just I just wanted this house to have a bunch of plants to go with that eco lifestyle, like eco feel. You know, the plants to me just equal eco friendly for some reason. <laughs> That's just how my mind works there. Um, so here we've got a mirror. Nothing too exciting going on here. Just cluttering up the dresser, adding in the various dresser top related knickknacks that you would have. This overall isn't a super messy, like it, it's not a super cluttered house, but I just still wanted to have that feel of being lived in, you know, because people have stuff and stuff goes places. So just trying to show that a little bit in this house without making it feel too over the top cluttered. But I think that's almost it for figuring out what I wanted to have on top of this counter or on top of this dresser. Just got a picture frame there from a sports team or something like that and some plants and that is about it. But we are nearing the end of the building part of this video, so as usual, there will be a link to download this build in the description. There will be other stuff in there on how to find it in-game, and that was going to be it for me, so hope you enjoy the rest of the video.
crazy Monday. I know it shows that I'm a little nervous. I just read. 